flexural equilibrium where the radii have been removed, that is explosives. And, and his equilibrium is, is a very a completely unstable condition. <laughs> that is, when, uh, when we first had submarines, we used to fill the water ballast tanks so it was just at equilibrium. <laughs> And then, if anybody happened to just drop a monkey wrench over, we could throw the balance out, and they would tend to nose over and, and get into radio trouble. When we began flying, then we came to what we call the stall. <coughs> the stall is simply a point when, at the equilibrium, at the stall, anything can happen, can go any kind of a spin. Mm -hmm. Nature abhors that equilibrium. She always. Uh, everything you and I know will always be one side or the other of the equilibrium. At any rate, this is the most expansive form of the of these vectors that I gave you. Now here's vector equilibrium. Can can you can everybody see this all right? And I'm going to take this top face and move it lower it towards the face on the floor. And this top triangle is not allowed to twist can only approach the triangle on the floor. Got two planes approaching each other. Understand? So this means this vertex will always be towards you. Yeah. And the vertex on the floor is towards me. So I'm going to do this. Suddenly, it's collapsed to where the squirrels are changing. They become diamonds, then ridge pole diamonds. Now the distance between the the vertex is, is such that the line is exactly the same as the other vectors. Therefore, I put in six vectors there, and you have the icosahedron. This is the icosahedron. Vector equilibrium then comes down to the first stable form, which is the icosahedron. The vector equilibrium itself consisted of eight tetrahedra, each of a volume of one, six one half octahedra. A half octahedra is two, so six of two is twelve. Twelve and and eight are twenty. The vector equilibrium volume is twenty, and so it now collapses. Correct. I want to say that twentyness of the vector equilibrium gets tightened up into the icosahedron with another set of vectors. The, 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 the six more introduced, or one more unit of quantum. <laughs> now I'm going to keep lowering that triangle towards the one for not twisting at all, and now. It suddenly contracts to become the octahedron. That's a very beautiful thing you watch. All vertexes approach common center at a, a common rate. It's absolutely symmetrical expansion. Comes by up here and now contracts the other way. But the the axis in my hands never rotates. Only the only the equator is rotating. Now I can go, supposing this is rotating in space, a group of stars, there's a, gra a, mass, there's a mass attraction pull of another set of stars, and one then, this is trying to turn, and then it restrains this. It, what, what happens when you do that would be then, I move this around, it forces it to contract. If it's being forced to contract that way, then Remember, notice it's rotating this way. This rotates more and plunges right through and becomes the tetrahedron. We've gone all the way from vector equilibrium, icosahedron, octahedron, vector equilibrium. The octahedron is double bonded, tetrahedron is quadruple bonded, quadrivalent, we call it. This way, diamonds are in respect to carbon. <clears throat> we have no, no point to we break open. So the maximum space employed by unity is, is a vector equilibrium, but all the structures are within it. <laughs> they're, they're contracted form from the whole. Now notice that this can then tetrahedron. I, I had it plunge that through like that. This can then immediately reverse itself and tetrahedron can turn inside out. <laughs> Just like, does it absolutely spontaneously. There's a basic pumping. Okay. <coughs> that, that, that identifies vector equilibrium and introduces a hierarchy of accounting, <laughs> which uh, everything is rational except for the icosahedron's volume, 1851, which you find 
plus the what we call the the vector edge cube exactly adds up to exactly the volume 27. It's a, it is a rational, co complementary rational. And it does it in, in the, in a very interesting kind of a way. So we have the, there's the octahedron or the icosahedron inside it. <laughs> and this does the most extraordinary thing, it rotates inside here. <laughs> Absolutely congruent with, with its edges. And, I'm now gone far enough in the synergetics, as we call this, in the hierarchy of, of accounting, and showing you how, by using triangulation and, and, and tetrahedroning, you can then accommodate fourth power and fifth power. One reason why science became very remote to the hum humanists occurred subsequent to the steam event. The humanist could see the steam, <laughs> and he could see this pipe, and he could understand exactly how it pushed that turbine wheel around, whatever it might be. No trouble about that. But when electromagnetics came, about the middle of the 19th century, the humanist said to the scientist, what's this invisible electricity thing doing here? Uh, you've got to tell us, because we can't see it without our eye, you've got to tell us what the model is doing, because we could see what the steam was doing. <coughs> we can see what the water wheel is doing, and we're sure that they must be able to see this thing. And the scientist said, we're very sorry, we, we, we can't. We make a, another winding around the magnet with, of copper, and what happens here, we have electromagnetics, and, and it'll move a needle. And so we have needle moved to various quantities, and we find that the, as we change the cross-section of the copper, we make more and more winding, very introduced variables into it. They've got various readings, and we find that they're mathematically interrelated with great regularities. And so that <coughs> we are able then to simply say to you that we get on very nicely with, with, the, with the algebra and, and the mathematics. We can express everything mathematically, and it gets to be highly predictable. If we make one more winding, we can predict exactly what it's going to do. <coughs> and out of this came Ohm's law and so forth. And these, math these humanists said, but you're telling us something goes through this solid wire over there to make this motor go around, and people is going to affect people's lives, and you've got to tell us is that really how it works? Because as humanists, I've got to describe something. I'm a describer. <laughs> it's got to be modelable. And so the scientists said, we're terribly sorry, I can't do that. Then suddenly, with these scientists use, making energy experiment after experiment, now they had electromagnetic needle. They found that black body radiation produced a Super, uh, superscript four, exponential four effect, what you call four dimension. And the scientists said, isn't that great? We can only make 